As you will have seen through this course, the process of developing a software solution to a problem involves several stages, including understanding and defining the problem, designing a solution, implementing that solution in code, and finally, evaluating our solution against our requirements. In assessing student learning, we would want to look at each of these aspects individually. In this video, we will explore several techniques that can be used for assessment in digital technologies. We will look at some examples of how they can be applied across these stages. However, these are simply some suggestions for what might be done. I'm sure that you can all think of many more. The process of defining our problem involves an analysis of the problem requirements. These can take two forms, the functional requirements, which relate to the completion of the actual task that is required, and the non-functional requirements, which encompasses environmental, technical, social and usability constraints. For example, we might consider a specific usability requirement, such as maximum delay in the software system responding to a request, or an environmental constraint in terms of a maximum expectation for energy consumption. In the process of defining and decomposing their real-world problem, students are asked to consider all of these aspects. They need to determine what are important factors in usability for the group of people who will be using the software system. And what are the important functional aspects that need to be provided by the software system? Assessing students' understanding of the problem space involves determining whether they have identified appropriate constraints and functional and usability requirements. Have they been able to clearly identify a group of users? Have they been able to identify the relevant characteristics for this group? For example, if developing a mobile app for the elderly, you might want to increase the size of your buttons and links, but would you want to do this for a group of teenagers? Peer review can be an effective assessment technique within digital technologies. For example, you might form students into small groups and have groups or even perhaps pairs of students work on different aspects of the requirements. For example, you might have some of the groups work on usability aspects, while others may define the functional requirements, while others might consider the technical constraints, for example, what data is needed in order to solve the problem. Once each group has developed their list of requirements, you could ask all of the groups to swap their requirements to see whether they have each understood what is needed. You might have the groups responsible for a particular task, say usability, swap first to work out what is the final agreed set of requirements. The groups together might then prepare a poster describing their requirements to be shared with the rest of the class. When considering the design of their system, we are interested in the quality and suitability of the algorithms that students develop. Students should be able to describe algorithms to solve problems using flowcharts and written descriptions using pseudocode. Again, peer review can be very useful here. Once a student or group of students have defined their algorithms, either using flowcharts or pseudocode, they can swap their design with another student or group of students that have been exploring the same aspect of the system. Students can be asked to review the other students' work by asking a series of questions that help them contrast their work with the other students and observe different ways of achieving the same goal. How is this different from what we came up with? Why did they introduce these differences? Can we understand how the algorithm works? A common task in validating an algorithm is to check its operation against a set of known inputs with expected outputs. This involves tracing through our algorithm with the input data, observing and recording where branches in our algorithm are chosen and how many times repetition occurs. For example, if we had developed an algorithm to sort a set of integer values, we could know that if we gave it the following data as input, that it should produce the following output. Students can be asked to develop a testing data set which is a set of pairs of known inputs and expected outputs for our program. This can be evaluated in itself in terms of whether it is a comprehensive set. For example, a testing data set should test each branch point in your algorithm and should test the boundaries of any point of repetition. Tracing through algorithms is a necessary skill in digital technologies. This can form part of a peer review exercise as students can be asked to take a known input and trace through the algorithm, perhaps as a think aloud exercise, while the other students listen. Did they take the right path? Have they missed any steps? 
A think aloud exercise is where a student explains what they are thinking and why they are making the decisions that they are as they complete a task. This can be useful to help articulate and share the process of tracing. 